Is slicing the golf ball one of your biggest pain points? Welcome to Your Golf Channel. I'm your PGA coach, Jed Walters, and in today's lesson, we're gonna look at why it happens and what we can do ultimately to stop it happening so we can hit some golf shots which are more to target and start enjoying the game much more. Let's go and dive in. Well, let's start with what a slice is. Well, the relationship between where the club face points at impact and the direction that your club is traveling in through the impact is what creates the curvature that we see on the golf ball. And for a typical slicer, what will happen is the club face will generally be pointing in a good direction. You'll generally point it towards or in the general direction of your target. The problem is the golf club isn't traveling in that direction of impact, it's generally traveling across. So for a right-hander, it would be traveling across to the left. So. The ball is then always going to curve away from the direction the club travels in. So if you've got a club traveling to the left, the club face pointing towards the target, then the golf ball is going to curve away from that left travel and slice back to the right. If you're a left-handed player, then your club's going to be traveling across to the right, club face again pointing at target, so the ball's going to curve away from the right and off to the left. The greater the separation between where this points, and where this is traveling, increases the curve. So if we can get the relationship close together, then we can reduce the curve and hit straighter shots. So we can reduce the slice. We can ease the pain of seeing that shot time and time again. So if that's what the slice is, then what is it that generally causes it from a golfer's perspective? So why do we hit those slices then? Well, generally it's because we're good at getting the face pointing where we need it to point. We want the ball to go towards a target. Mentally, we see that as a straight line from point A to point B, so we're good at pointing the club face somewhere around there. Uh, the problem is that straight isn't really a thing when it comes to swinging the golf club. You know, the golf club is on a tilted angle, so for us to swing straight, well, that would be the angle that would be required, which is all well and good if you're playing croquet. Um, but because we don't stand down our target line, so we don't stand from this angle and hit the golf ball, we stand from this angle and hit the golf ball. So straight really isn't an option. So what happens then when you're thinking about straight from the top of your backswing, generally this happens. So the club and the arms, as you can see, now move away from the body, the club moves away from the body, and then we try and function the outcome and it starts coming back this way. It's also one of those causes of the old chicken wing. Um, so what would then be root causes of that? And why would we think about swinging that way? Um, the position that we have the golf ball has a lot to do with it for a lot of people. So it's not just the idea of hitting the golf ball straight and trying to see straight lines. It's also then trying not to hit the ground first. So we shift the golf ball too far to the back side in the setup position. And then the body tries to then compensate for that and slows one area down, speeds the other one up and we start to move the club across again. So our intention is important, our setup is important. Our setup will determine sometimes how we move the club from the initial portion in the takeaway through to the top of the back swing. That knock on chain of events can just categorically start the slice even before the club's moving back down towards the golf ball. So when we think about that typical slice of swing, from down the target line view, it's from here and over the top. So the club is moving away from the body, but moving away this way towards where the golf ball is. Now we can see trail shoulder can stay high, hands can move out, which will move the arms and move the club out. We feel like we need to sort of pull down on the handle, which then starts to get the club vertical. So all these things can make it happen. Now, because we're on a tilted angle, for some of you that'll feel normal. Um, if I change the angle and show you exactly what's happening, you probably look and think, how on earth am I swinging the golf club that way? So let's just start from this way and say, right, well, if we were to swing the golf club here, then the typical slicer is doing that. And as you say, that just looks insane. Why on earth would we swing the golf club 
that way. We just wouldn't from stood up this way. But from this angle, we somehow think that that's a good thing to do. Um, and it doesn't feel so unnatural. So let's take a look at how we can start to ease these pain points and start getting control of the relationship of the club face and the path that it's moving on. So number one, we've got to check our ball position within the width of stance at our setup. Um, it's one of the big killers that subconsciously we know we don't want to leave the golf ball there, so we will function the outcome. And as I said earlier, if the golf ball moves too much to the trail side, then the body can't move in the way it needs to to function. So it's not going to turn and we're going to get the arms down and then start to sort of scoop and flip and try and create the outcome. So let's get the golf ball in a better place. Let's try and get the golf ball for your iron. So I've got a seven iron here, a little bit forward. So a little bit towards the lead side of the center of your body. From that point there, your body is going to want to then start to rotate much better and the club will move around the circle much better once you get used to knowing that I don't need to slow down and start throwing the club to try and create the outcome. So make sure you check your ball position is in the right place because that could be one of your causes. Number two is we've got to look at that takeaway, that initial move away from the golf ball. So a common one we see from many slices would be that the golf club moves away from the ball and stays really low to the ground and moves around this way. Now, it can move around with good sort of wrist movement. It can also move around with a real roll of the lead forearm in this way. So as you can see there, face the watch, back of the glove is almost pointing up towards the sky. At that point, the club is way behind the body. From this kind of movement, the only thing we can do is then to start lifting the arms. And this sort of lifting movement at the top is then gonna create this looped action. And then we start coming over the top. So if you have that takeaway, which is moving around this way, we need to check that. We need to make sure that it's moving in a better way. So a little drill we can use, a butterfly hand. So lead hand stays on, trail hand goes underneath. So back of the hands start touching each other. And then we want to feel that the trail arm starts to pull more in a straight line and the club starts moving this way. And as you can see there, the club head is outside my hands. So if we've got this happening, we need to feel the complete opposite. We need to start to feel this happening to stop that low and lift and loop sort of backswing into the start of the downswing. Number three is please, please, please stop trying to hit the golf ball straight. Hitting a golf ball straight is what is really creating that steeper angle for many golfers. And when we think we move the golf ball, uh, the golf club, should we say, around this circular motion, then, well, this part here isn't moving straight. This part's moving down and to the right. So if you're slicing the ball, we've got to think about swinging the golf club in the opposite direction. We've got to think about the golf club moving down to the right. You know, you could exaggerate thinking that you're really going to start the golf ball way off to the right and then see yourself hitting the golf ball with a big draw. So a right hand is going to move it down to the right, a left hand is going to move it down to the left. But you need to start to see the shape of the shot have the draw curve. So if I was to make the backswing up to the top here, we'd want to be thinking about moving the club down this way. So this is downward portion of that circle as if we're going to go there. The rotational side of the body is going to then bring the club face more back towards the target. And remember, you're pretty good at getting the club face generally towards the target. Now, the more we see this shape starting to try and get the golf ball to move through the air, the more we're going to start to see the golf ball fly straight. Let me just say that again. The more you think about hitting a golf ball with this draw curve, the more you're gonna see it 
fly straight. So we don't need to think about hitting it straight. We need to think about curving the ball correctly, delivering the club correctly in the downward portion of the downswing so that you can then hit straighter looking golf shots. Remember, it's about controlling the relationship of how this moves through impact and where this looks through impact. Now that the ball position may be in a better place and we've got the idea of not hitting the golf ball straight, we need to then think about how the body's going to work. The body's going to need to turn more in its circle and make sure that it doesn't hang too far back to the trail side. So the idea that we want to have in our mind would be that your lead shoulder, so for me, my left shoulder, if I was just to put this club across the top here, so if my lead shoulder in the backswing moved down towards the ground and then my trail shoulder in the downswing traded places moving down towards the ground and then from this point here you can see how I've still got this tilt to the side this movement here so this lead shoulder moving upwards at this point here round through and into the finish so again from here you can see lead shoulder moves down towards the ground as the hips rotate so we're moving round in that circular motion and then the lead shoulder is going to go up the trail shoulder is working down and then we keep the turn moving 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 through into the finish you also notice that now my pressure is more onto my lead leg, my left leg. So not only are we moving in a circle, but I'm also moving in the downswing towards the target as I rotate into the finish. So this feeling, this retention of tilt in the circle of movement is gonna help the ability for you to move the golf club down this way rather than with the trail shoulder staying really high and moving the golf club over and across this way. So lead shoulder goes up, trail shoulder goes down, so the club shallows down and moves from the inside against trail shoulder staying high, moving the club out, down and across to produce that typical slice delivery. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope it's helping you to understand a little bit more about how and why you hit those slice shots. If you did enjoy it, please post your comments in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how, if it's helped you, how it's helped you. Uh, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to click the thumb to let me know that you are enjoying the content. Also, if you don't subscribe to your golf channel, click on the subscribe button below there and hit the little bell icon so that you are notified every time that your golf channel launches a new lesson video. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.